local debts pile up, prompting CCP secret order to stop and postpone infrastructure construction. Real estate giant bank accused of dodging taxes over a over staggering 100 billion yuan. Banks tow away cars Speech overnight. Speech control Network explodes. explodes. 2024 becomes the year of CCP's special campaign to regulate information. Significant issue left unaddressed, Li Chang makes no mention of it at Davos Forum. Beijing builds national network to counter Starlink, exposing the thing the CCP fears most. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Local debts pile up, prompting CCP secret order to stop and postpone infrastructure construction. The situation in China is alarming due to the excessively large local debt and the debt crisis has reached a critical point. On January 19, Reuters reported, citing three reliable sources, that the Chinese State Council has directed local governments burdened with escalating debt and state-owned banks to halt or postpone infrastructure projects in 12 regions nationwide that are less than half completed. These regions include Liaoning, Jilin, the southwestern provinces of Guizhou and Yunnan, as well as Tianjin and Chongqing. The affected infrastructure projects encompass the reconstruction or expansion of highways and airports, along with urban railway projects. According to Reuters, citing 2022 data from the International Monetary Fund, the debt of Chinese local governments had already reached 92 trillion yuan, nearly 13 trillion US dollars, by that time. By the end of 2022, various economic issues converged, leading China into an unprecedented scale of a debt crisis. In 2023, local governments had to continue issuing bonds to borrow new funds to repay old debts, with Chinese media reporting that the total amount of bonds issued by local governments last year was approximately 10 trillion yuan, approximately 1.4 trillion US dollars. Economist Ching Xiaonong, in his recent article on Radio Free Asia titled Debt Destroys China, emphasizes that all economic crises are essentially debt crises. When a country's debt becomes so large that it cannot be repaid, the economy is beyond salvation. This accurately describes the current situation in China. The Chinese government has consistently allowed banks to purchase local government bonds, essentially making banks the safety net for massive local debts. According to the official 2023 China Banking Industry Survey report, in 2022, 59 listed banks in China held government bonds worth 43.7 trillion yuan, approximately 6.14 trillion US dollars, accounting for seven-tenths of the total bond amount. The six major state-owned banks mainly undertook the bonds of local governments. Consequently, if a debt crisis erupts, the result may be worse than a real estate collapse, severely impacting the Chinese banking industry and leading to a financial crisis. In Debt Destroys China, Ching Xiaonong analyzes that Chinese banks heavily depend on government credit, and the general belief among the Chinese public is that the government will prevent state-owned banks from collapsing. As a result, banks refrain from revealing the true extent of bad debts to avoid causing panic. Consequently, the actual debt of major Chinese banks cannot be accurately gauged based on their reported data. Despite this, the international financial community perceives a scent of financial risk in China. Recently, Moody's downgraded the credit ratings of eight major Chinese banks, shifting them from stable to negative. This includes the five major state-owned banks, as well as the Agricultural Development Bank, the China Development Bank, and the Export-Import Bank, which are policy banks. Qing predicts that China is currently undergoing its second financial crisis, and the fate of Chinese banks is intricately tied to the survival of the political regime. This financial crisis is, therefore, also a crisis for the ruling regime. The substantial debt crisis has pushed China and the Chinese communist regime to the edge of a financial crisis. There are divergent opinions on how the CCP will respond to salvage its regime. Some self-media commentaries propose that the CCP might instruct state-owned banks to use long-term loans to replace locally disclosed debts. These loans would be continuously renewed upon maturity with interest rates gradually reduced. In theory, local debts would become perpetual, with no need to repay the principal. Only the interest payments would be covered by printing more money each year. However, this would inevitably lead to the devaluation of the Chinese yuan, diluting the wealth of the Chinese people and essentially making them bear the burden of local debts. On the contrary, some netizens argue that such an approach would trigger inflation and be equivalent to suicide.
They believe the CCP would not opt for this path. Instead, it might follow Russia's example by initiating a war to shift domestic contradictions, activate production capacity, and reduce the workforce. Real estate giant Vank accused of dodging taxes over a staggering 100 billion yuan. On January 18, Vank Group Company, Limited, a major Chinese real estate developer, faced official accusations of evading taxes exceeding 100 billion yuan over the past decade. The accuser is Vank's long term partner, Yentai Byron Real Estate Company, Limited, based in Yentai, Shandong, with a collaborative history spanning over 10 years. Buy Run Real Estate stated, Due to our partnership, we have discovered that Vank is not the so-called good corporate citizen in real estate as they claim, but rather an unscrupulous enterprise engaged in tax evasion. Based on the information currently available to us, Vank's tax evasion in the past decade is estimated to be over 100 billion Chinese yuan, approximately 14.05 billion US dollars. According to the report, the methods Vank used to evade taxes are diverse and can be mainly summarized into two aspects, first, concealing income, second, inflating costs. Through a two-way approach, these tactics significantly minimize the company's profits, achieving the goal of evading national taxes. Firstly, starting from inconspicuous garages, parking spaces, and small sheds, selling at extremely low prices or directly gifting. Examples of this include the Yentai Jade Chang'an Project, Yentai Seattle Parking Spaces, and Yentai Tsuehu Shan Xiao Project. Secondly, using property to offset debt, avoiding sales transactions, and concealing taxable income. The report cites instances where Vank used properties from projects such as Yentai Yulongshan, Feitsui Chang'an, and Makui Fu to offset payments to its affiliated companies. Thirdly, overpricing for tax reduction directly reducing taxable income. The report explicitly mentions instances of overpricing and underreporting under the manipulation of Vank, specifically in the Yentai Seattle project. As early as August 2023, Byron Real Estate officially reported Vank for illegal tax evasion activities. In response, Yentai City Tax Authorities formed 11 special investigation teams. However, Vank's accounts remain unreconciled to date. Despite various overt attempts, including letters, phone calls, and meetings with key personnel, Vank persists in refusing to settle its accounts. Vank, once considered a golden brand in the Chinese real estate market and controlled by a Shenzhen state-owned enterprise, is currently facing declining performance. Recently released 2023 performance data from the top three Chinese real estate developers, Poly Developments, Vank, and China Overseas Land and Investment, show a collective downturn. Vank, in particular, witnessed a nearly 10% year-on-year decrease in accumulated contract sales, leading to a 40% decline in its stock price since the beginning of the year. Speech control tightens further. 2024 becomes the year of CCP's special campaign to regulate information. The CCP has designated 2024 as the special action year for combating and rectifying internet rumors. This move has led public security authorities in various regions of China to intensify their crackdown on internet rumor cases, resulting in penalties for numerous individuals and fostering a sense of insecurity among the public. In detail, Shanghai public security agencies recently reported handling eight cases of internet rumors and addressing 967 instances of false information. Similar efforts have been observed in other regions, including Hubei, Nanjing, Chongqing, Inner Mongolia, and Guizhou, where authorities have reported dealing with numerous cases related to internet rumors. Initiated in April of the previous year, the CCP's special rectification of internet rumors had, by December 22, 2023, resulted in the closure of 34,000 online accounts and the punishment of over 6,300 individuals. Reports suggest that, aiming to ensure the ongoing stability of society, the Ministry of Public Security has designated 2024 as a special year for a campaign to combat and rectify internet rumors. Mr. Chi, a Chinese citizen, emphasized that ordinary people rely on their own perceptions, with a greater focus on political security than actual rumors. He highlighted the connection between the economic downturn and the loss of people's confidence. 
Recognizing this, the authorities are employing methods reminiscent of the Cultural Revolution, adopting an ostrich policy to prevent people from discussing or even seeing the issues at hand. He expressed that the CCP believes this approach can prevent further economic collapse, which he views as a very foolish strategy. Mr. Wu, a Chinese citizen from the mainland, stated, the main reason is the fear that if the common people know the truth. Currently, the central government is in a state of chaos, primarily concerned about personal interests. There is a significant lack of confidence in the regime, especially with the second-generation Reds facing intense internal conflicts. If the internal situation is not well controlled, they are hesitant to take external actions. At the moment, they are in a state of fearing both external threats and internal challenges. Commentator Liu Wei from Nanjing echoed these sentiments, stating that China's economy is in a dire state, with long-standing issues of social injustice reaching a breaking point. Public grievances have erupted, and in reality, most individuals targeted by the authorities are not spreading rumors. The official actions are seen as primarily focused on maintaining stability. Significant issue left unaddressed, Li Chang makes no mention of it at Davos Forum. As the Houthi group's ongoing attacks on the Red Sea shipping route disrupt global trade, companies are reassessing risk strategies and considering relocating production lines to more proximate locations. This trend is exerting additional pressure on Chinese exporters. According to a January 19 Reuters report, the disruption in Red Sea shipping has significantly intensified survival challenges for Chinese businessman Han Changming's trading company. The cost of shipping containers to Europe has surged from $3,000 to about $7,000 since the Houthi armed forces began attacking Red Sea shipping, impacting Han's Fuzhou Hanchangming International Trade Company, LTD. The disruption of one of the world's busiest routes has exposed the vulnerability of China's dependence on exports. This Tuesday, during a speech at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Chinese Premier Li Chang emphasized the need to maintain the stability and smooth operation of global supply chains, although he did not specifically mention the Red Sea. To mitigate the impact of disrupted shipping, some companies are adopting strategies to reduce dependence on China. For instance, the US-based BDI furniture company is increasingly relying on factories in Turkey and Vietnam. Chinese companies now face the crisis of potential emulation by other firms in re-evaluating risk strategies and relocating production lines closer to their operations, a strategy known as nearshoring. Marco Castelli, founder of IC Trade exporting Chinese manufactured mechanical parts to Europe, remarked, if it is permanent, and it could be permanent, then the whole mechanism will be readjusted. Some, companies, may also consider moving more production to India because India is closer to Europe. Companies need to reassess everything. The disruption in the Red Sea shipping route compounds challenges for the Chinese economy, already grappling with a real estate crisis, weak consumer demand, population decline, and global growth challenges. Ships rerouting around the Red Sea, the shortest route from Asia to Europe through the Suez Canal, and bypassing the Cape of Good Hope may increase the shipping time by two weeks. This could reduce global container capacity and disrupt the supply chain, as the longer time needed for ships to return to ports for reloading could cause delays. This delay might also mean that goods originally scheduled to reach western shelves in April or May will be postponed. Approximately 60% of China's products exported to Europe use the Suez Canal route, making the Red Sea a major transportation route for Chinese goods to the west, as per data from the Middle East Institute, a Washington-based think tank. Beijing builds national network to counter Starlink, exposing the thing the CCP fears most. As Starlink, the American satellite internet system, continues to advance technologically and extend its high-speed internet access to an increasing number of countries, the Chinese authorities are growing increasingly fearful. Currently, Starlink provides high-speed internet access to over 60 countries through a satellite constellation comprising thousands of low-Earth orbit satellites. It deviates from traditional methods, eliminating the need for ground stations and enabling free and high-speed internet access. The strategic significance of Starlink was highlighted during the conflict in Ukraine, where Russia attacked and damaged Ukraine's telecommunications infrastructure. 
Despite this, Ukraine maintained high-speed internet connectivity with the assistance of Starlink. Li Yuanhua, in an interview with Sound of Hope, noted, the Chinese Communist Party has always aspired to global dominance, and its strategy for space dominance has been underway. Now that a U.S. technology company leads in this area, the CCP appears anxious. It accuses the United States of space hegemony, revealing its ambitions. Due to the technological gap, it makes such statements out of fear. If Elon Musk decides to forego profits from China, it could pose a challenge. If the CCP attempts to disrupt Taiwan's communication systems, Musk's Starlink could play a role, making the strategic plan to induce panic ineffective. Elon Musk, owner of Starlink, also operates a gigafactory in China for Tesla electric vehicles. In 2022, Musk revealed that the CCP government asked him to ensure that Starlink would not be introduced in China. Li Yuanhua and Jianping Lai, the president of the Canadian Alliance of Chinese Associations, both believe that what the CCP fears the most is that Starlink breaks through the extensive firewall that the CCP has spent trillions of yuan building. This would allow the Chinese people to access true and open information, rendering the CCP's brainwashing techniques less effective. Chanting Lai stated, Starlink technology will bring communication freedom worldwide. If China's online gateway is open without network control or firewalls, Chinese citizens can communicate freely with the outside world. This means that the Chinese people would have access to a wealth of information, including the dark and evil history of the Communist Party, which the Chinese Communist Party fears the most. If the Chinese people have sufficient information, the single-party rule of the Communist Party and Xi Jinping's personal dictatorship will face a significant threat, and this regime may even collapse. In response, the CCP has decided to develop its own satellite internet system to compete with Starlink. In 2020, China's National Development and Reform Commission included satellite broadband development in the list of new infrastructure projects. In the same year, Chinese state-owned enterprises submitted a Constellation Project application to the International Telecommunication Union ITU, under the codename GW, pinyin abbreviation for State Grid, involving a minimum of 12,992 satellites. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.